Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hopefully this thing will clear up more than this. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is part five. We had to rebroadcast. I had a call come in, so I had to rebroadcast. I apologize for that. Amen. Praise God. Welcome back to all those who want to watch this on the replay. Amen. Praise God. We're just going to go forward. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't caught part one, you can watch part one. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We apologize. I got a call came in and knocked me off the broadcast. I apologize for that. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So we're just going to continue on, you know what I'm saying, where I left off. No need to do any more pleasantries. You can catch, you know what I'm saying, uh, part five, the first part here on Periscope. Uh, and you can go to uh, tr um, catch.me slash Tracy Smith LMT and get caught up. Amen. So we're in James chapter five, verses uh, 14. And it says, is anyone among you sick? You know what I'm saying? So, we, you know, we're sick. We have responsibility to call the elders. He said he should call in the church elders and spiritual guys, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. So those of us, those of us who we are, we are under shepherds, you know what I'm saying? Your under shepherd, your elders, whether they be the, uh, the office of a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, bishops. Doesn't matter whatever the title are, you know what I'm saying? If they have a flock under them, you know what I'm saying? They have responsibility to come when you call. You know what I'm saying? At least two of them. At least. Because it said call the elders. Not just one. Elders S mean multiple, more than one. They have responsibility to come when you call. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know what I'm saying, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? They have responsibility to come. You know what I'm saying? Like that. They can't be making no excuses. That's why, you know what I'm saying? People think ministry is easy. Ministry, you know what I'm saying? Say, you know what I'm saying? It may look like a cakewalk or easy, but you have to be on call. You have to be on call to go and do the work of the ministry, you know what I'm saying, when uh, when the when the situation is called for it, when the emergency, whatever, when it's convenient, when it's inconvenient, whether it's welcome or unwelcome. You know what I'm saying? As a minister of God, a servant of God, having uh, being an under shepherd, we have responsibility to show up and serve the people of God to meet their needs. You know what I'm saying? This is not an easy thing. So, you know what I'm saying? People think, oh, don't bother, bother the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the evangelist, the pastor, the deacon, or deacon, so-and-so, you know what I'm saying, later, nothing like that. No, they should know. They know the word. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, they have a charge. We have a divine charge. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a divine charge. This is not a nine-to-five job. You know what I'm saying? Where you can just show up where it's convenient, doing banking hours. No. They have responsibility to show up and to serve, to do what the word says to do tomorrow doing the word of God. That's what he's saying in 2 Timothy chapter 4. You know what I'm saying? It's not just they're just supposed to be preaching the word. You know what I'm saying? He said, here, preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Okay? Stand by. Be at hand and be ready. Whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether it be welcome or unwelcome, you know what I'm saying? They got to be ready, just like emergency uh, care workers are. When they somebody get hurt and they call emergency, uh, we have the emergency over here, somebody got hurt. Okay, what is your uh, address? What's your phone number? We on the way. Come, Cyrus blaring. That's how the people of God, the men of uh, one of God who are serving God as under shepherds. When the people of God call them when they're sick and they're in need, they're supposed to get up. Out of their bed, get dressed, get in their vehicles, and they need to come with God speed. I ain't saying run no red lights or nothing like that or run no stop signs, but they need to come with God speed. They need to come. Now, see, people think that's an uh, easy walk. You got to be on hand, be on call. You know what I'm saying? Oh, don't bother apostle so and so. Don't bother, you know what I'm saying, pastor so and so, a prophet so and so, evangelist so and so, teacher so and so, deacon so and so, bishop so and so. If they're the only ones who they are under shepherds, if they don't say if there's no other deacons under them or under shepherds under them available, they got to come. They got to come. That's their responsibility to come, to show up, not to make no excuses. See? And y'all just love to have it so. You know what I'm saying? Y'all submitted y'all lives on these people. You know what I'm saying? That's why you want to be under under shepherds that God has appointed you and put you on. That they have a, you know what I'm saying, a servant heart. And they know that, you know what I'm saying, when, you know what I'm saying, they have to come forth and serve. They, you know what I'm saying, they don't make excuses. And they don't build it, no, because they titles or whatever like that. They don't make excuses. They get up and they go and do the work of the Lord. Tomorrow being a do of the word. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. 
That's why, you know what I'm saying, some people have well, they've been out there, choose their own little uh, under-shepherds, apostles, prophets, various pastors, teachers, whatever. Join themselves to ministries uh, according to their own, you know? Amen. God bless you. You know what I'm saying? I'm ministering at this time. God bless you. Good evening. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, you know what I'm saying? My uh, policy at this time, I'm going to leave the chat open right now. Y'all welcome to comment or whatever like that. But, you know, forgive me if I ignore your comment because I want to be led of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and share on Facebook and Twitter if you're led. You know what I'm saying? And give hearts. But as far as your comments, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be truly try to be responding to your comments. I want to be led of the spirit. So, pray for my strength in the Lord. You're welcome. God bless you. So, amen. So, the under shepherds have responsibility to come. I don't care if it's one o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, twelve o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? One o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. They got a kid up and come. They got the call. They can't do it when it's convenient for them. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know what I'm saying. If somebody they called, you know what I'm saying. The ambulance called the hospital and they said somebody got hurt. They they bleeding to death. You know what I'm saying? They they, they got shot or cut or whatever. They can't breathe. Whatever. They'll be like, okay, we're going to send somebody out there, uh, you know what I'm saying, when they get ready. You know what I'm saying? We're going to check on our uh, paramedics and see if they're ready, if they want to take the call. You know what I'm saying? Whenever they're ready, uh, they'll come out there when they when they get ready. But we, instead of what they call us emergency, we need some help right now. You know what I'm saying? That's how the people, the men are true and women of God who are under shepherds are supposed to be. They don't want to be making no excuses. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me turn my phone off. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so calling me late and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That comes with the charge, with the office. That comes with the call, baby. You got to answer the call and you got to go and do the work of the ministry. See? This ain't no easy cakewalk. Everybody always want to be in the ministry. You know what I'm saying? But then when the call comes, you know what I'm saying? They want to, it's not convenient for them. Oh, we'll check on them in the morning. We'll call them and see what's up. No. You know what I'm saying? You are not a faithful understanding. You're not doing the work of the ministry. And that's your attitude toward the people of God that God has put under you to shepherd the flock of God, to feed the flock of God, to serve the flock of God, to do the work of the ministry. This is the word of God. James chapter 5 said, if any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. You know what I'm saying? And when they got the call, your responsibility is to call them. And you know what I'm saying? When they keep the call, they are supposed to come. Not when it's convenient. Oh, we'll do it tomorrow. Oh, we'll call a prayer meeting later on. No, you need to get up, get out your pajamas, put on your pants and your shoes, get in your car, and you need to go and do the work of the ministry. See, but y'all love to have a soul. They always, oh, my pastor, my prophet, my bishop, my pastor, my teacher, my deacon. As soon as you're sick and you're in need and you call them, they ain't nowhere to be found. That is not a true under shepherd. They are not serving you. They are serving themselves when it's only convenient for them. That is not obeying the word. That is sin. And if you're under that, you need to pray to God, you know what I'm saying, so that he can correct them. And if they refuse correction, you need to ask the Lord, if you chose that under shepherd, you need to ask the Lord to lead you to somebody who will truly serve you and equip you to do the work of the ministry and to make a disciple, you know what I'm saying, so that you can be sent forth and do the same thing. That's a true under shepherd who's called to serve, not to be served. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave an example. I, your Lord and Master, washing your feet. I didn't come to serve, but to be served and to give my life for you. That's a true under shepherd who protects and guards the sheep and provides for the sheep. And when the sheep are in need, when they are lost, they leave the 99 and go seek out the one that's lost, the one that's in need. But y'all love to have it so worshiping them, throwing money at their feet, speaking highly of them, all this kind of stuff. See? But when you in need, they know where to be found. You don't need no under shepherd like that. That's not a true shepherd, under shepherd. That's a hireling, a hired servant who only cares about his quarter, his money. He'll show up at payday. See? In full force. It's too late then. See? But y'all love to have it so. What you gonna do in the end? You depending on the doctors and stuff like that? God want to show himself strong. He want to work through his divine power and through his faithful servants, faithful, obedient servants, to show himself strong on our behalf. We his people, the sheep of his pastor. He takes care of his own. We ain't got to be dependent on going out to no hospital. 
Thank God for, you know what I'm saying, Obamacare or whatever. Some countries, you know what I'm saying, they got free health care. They care about their citizens' health. France and Germany and all them other countries. People criticize Obamacare. You know what I'm saying? At least he's trying to get people, you know what I'm saying, health care. We should have it in, in here. The resources, the taxes we pay, you know what I'm saying, should be able to, to, be able to get affordable health care. That means that you care about your citizens, their health and their well-being. How are they going to pursue the pursuit of happiness or whatever and reach their full potential? If they get sick, you know what I'm saying, like that, then they got to take and spend their, uh, their, their uh, savings and retirement money. You know what I'm saying? Can't put their kids through college or whatever like that. Or lay up and store for their kids. See? But y'all love to have it so. And it don't matter whether they're Democrat, Republican, or anything like that. If they are not truly servants and want to serve, they're concerned about your, your well-being. That you be healthy. Yes, that you be protected, but that you be in good health. What, what good is, you know what I'm saying? You have, you know what I'm saying, I have a strong defense for your citizens and your people, but they're dropping dead behind your, your own lines. You know what I'm saying? They're the enemy that's killing them. They're dropping dead for a lack of health care, for a lack of service. See? See? And that's just a, a worldly analogy. But then in the spiritual realm, you know what I'm saying? The people are under shepherds of God. You know? If you care about God's people, you know what I'm saying? You should care about their total person. You know what I'm saying? Their, their spiritual well-being. You know what I'm saying? Their psychological, emotional, you know what I'm saying? Well-being, their will. You know what I'm saying? And their physical well-being. And God has provided everything we need pertaining to life and to godliness. You know what I'm saying? Through his gifts of the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Through his the, the Holy Spirit. And what God has blessed the, us with. That we have access to resources, if need be. But God don't need a doctor. You know what I'm saying? He can do it, but he gives a remedy. You know what I'm saying? First, we got to fulfill our responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? God is faithful. He can do it, but he wants us to operate as the body of Christ. Interdependent upon one another. If you're sick, call for your elders. And the elders, when you get the call, go. I don't care what time it is, go. And obey the word. Do what the word says to do. If you can't do that, you need to get out the way. Get out the ministry. You know what I'm saying? You're not fit. You're not fit to serve. Get out the way and stop hindering other people. Get out the way. You ain't doing the work of the office. You just desire to off the office, a good work, but you don't have time to do the work. You don't want to do the work. Get out. Get out. You're not doing the work. This is not, not a thing you can sit up there. Oh, wow. I'm the bishop of the, of the church here. Yeah, I'm the apostle, the pastor, the teacher, and everything like that. I got possession and authority and power. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Influence, you know? But sitting up, I call you to serve. Uh, uh, Y'all send somebody else. Uh, I, I, ain't, I'm, I ain't got time right now. Uh, whatever. You know, make all these excuses. You're not doing the work of the ministry. God didn't put you in the office and give you a title for you to sit up there and spin around, you know what I'm saying, get fat from eating that golden corral. Huh? You, you don't even model good health to them. So you're supposed to be an example of the believers. But y'all love to have it so. See? That's why y'all spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and in your will, and physically sick. And some because, you know what I'm saying, y'all not doers of the word. Y'all don't have respect to the Lord's table. Or being doing it as word in general. Thank you for my towel. See? But y'all love to have it so. Love to have it so. Oh, my apostle. Oh, my prophet. Prophetesses. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my, you know what I'm saying? Evangelist. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my pastor. Oh, my teacher. Oh, my deacon. Oh, my bishop. But as soon as you in need, where are they? They're not serving you. They're serving themselves when it's convenient for them. You know what I'm saying? And you, if that's the case and that's how they operate, you know what I'm saying? You need to pray to the Lord and ask him, is this truly the place that I'm supposed to be? You know what I'm saying? To be truly, you know what I'm saying? To, you know, uh, serve, to be equipped to do the work of the ministry so I can be sent forth as a disciple. You know what I'm saying? Not just be sitting under somebody 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years helping promote their ministry. 
God will give you true under shepherds. See? And those of you who call yourself under shepherds with these titles, if you're not doing the work of the ministry, you know what I'm saying? You need to repent. You need to repent and you need to go to the, 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 the flock and confess that you haven't been a doer of the word and you have been mouthing the word as best as you ought to, you know what I'm saying, to them and ask them for forgiveness. See? So God can restore you. You know what I'm saying? So he can truly work through your life to be a blessing to serve others as a faithful and obedient under shepherd. And if you're not going to do that, you know what I'm saying, then most likely God didn't call you. You know what I'm saying? You need to go sit down somewhere. Okay? Okay? False prophets and false teachers. See? He should call in the church elders, the spiritual God, and they. It's not saying that we can't pray. Each individual disciple or member, we should know. We get word. We heard it through the grapevine. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sister, brother, so, so sick. They need some help. Okay. Well, we know it's the spiritual guys that they're going there to pray and anoint them with oil. But you know what I'm saying? We heard about it. Let's pray and intercede for brother, sister, so, and so. We are praying. But it's their responsibility to go. And they should pray over him. See? That's what he said. They first go. To the sick person when they got the call, and then they should pray over them. See? See? Before he even give, you know what I'm saying? This is God's prescription. Before he even started talking about physical medicine, he said to go and pray over them. See? We talking about the prayer of faith. Not having faith in medicine. You know what I'm saying? Having faith in God. That he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. We're not dependent upon the medicine, but God can work through the medicine. But our faith is not in medicine and in doctors and in uh, pharmacy companies. They don't care. All they are is for money. They're not going to give you some medicine that's going to cure you. That's not what they're in business for. They're in business for a profit. You know, for their shareholders to make a profit. They, they, they got the answer. They probably got the answer to cancer, disease, and everything. But they're not going to just give it to you. They're going to meet it out little, little to keep you dependent upon them. Keep coming in and buying into them. Spending all your money. They're not in the business of giving you the cure. So you won't need them anymore. See, they'd be out of business then. See? And people all depended upon them. Thank God for, you know, those who study medicine and stuff like that and pharmacy companies like that. We pray because God can work through the medicine we're going to get to. But our faith is not supposed to be in doctors, you know what I'm saying, nurses, you know what I'm saying, care, care workers or whatever like that, uh, in pharmacy companies, in medicine. Our faith is supposed to be in the risen Lord and in, a pot, in, a pot, in his divine power. God don't need them, but he works through people and he throw, works through medicine. But our faith, you know what I'm saying, supposed to be on him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Not looking to the doctors and the pharmacy companies and to the, you know what I'm saying? And to the medicine. Don't have your faith in that. Have your faith in God. And if you have faith in God, you will pray the prayer of faith. Put your faith into action. Live by faith. See, but we got to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. See, that's why people ain't well. He said they should uh, come and pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. First, they got to pray the prayer of faith. See, and then it says anoint them with oil in the Lord's name. See, and the oil is just, you know, saying it's a point of contact. It's consecrating that person as that this vessel, this spirit being, this soul right here, this physical blessing is consecrated unto the Lord. It's sanctified and set aside for the master's use. See, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. That's a child of God. It's his responsibility to take care of his own. And God does take care of his own. He just needs some faithful and obedient and servant, you know, uh, servants. People who are willing to serve and not look to be served. That he can work through our lives. 
You know what I'm saying? To lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. To pray and anoint them and lay hands on the sick. The gift of healing and miracles to come forth. His divine power is manifested in demonstration and in power. Huh? According to the power that is already at work in us. The power is already at work in us. We got to, you know what I'm saying? Use it in faith. Use the gifts of the spirit in faith for the edification of the body of Christ. Not be trying to promote your own business, ministry, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Not be trying to, you know what I'm saying, put your testimony in a book and instead of telling your testimony, you selling your testimony. See? Not to promote yourself. It's for the building up of the body of Christ of itself in love. It's not for self-promotion. See? But y'all love to have it so. Some of y'all, y'all love to have it so. Just out there buying their books, CDs, tapes, movies, whatever. And here you over there sick. Spiritually and otherwise. Your needs are not being met. Wake up. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. See? But some people just love to have it so. What will you do in the end thereof? Hmm? You want somebody to tickle your ears, tell you what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? But when you call on them to come help you, you know what I'm saying? Guess what? That ain't what they want to hear. All they want to hear is when I say money coming to me, you are getting up, running out of the aisle, throwing your money. That's what they want to hear. Paper, baby. Paper, foot running, giving them money. That's what they want to hear. All the other stuff they don't want to hear. That's a hireling, a hired servant. And they're not hired by the Lord. Okay? They don't care about the sheep. When the wolf comes, they leave the sheep. They don't protect the sheep. They don't provide for the sheep. See? But y'all love to have it so. See? And they should pray over him. Before he even talk about anointing. You know what I'm saying? Anointing with oil. You know? He said, pray over them. You know what I'm saying? Pray the prayer of faith. Come in faith and obedience. You know what I'm saying? And pray the prayer of faith. You know what I'm saying? Calling on the name of the Lord. And then he said, anointed them with oil in the Lord's name. You know what I'm saying? That they should have their oil. He said, what the oil for? What is that about? Anointing oil. They should take the oil as a point of contact. You know what I'm saying? 1% pure voice virgin oil. You know what I'm saying? They should always have a bottle. Like they got a cell phone or wallet. They should have some oil with them at all times. Okay? Because you never know when a call may come. You ought to be ready. See? And they did a pray. They, you know what I'm saying? They on time, they're going to concentrate that oil and say, Lord, you anoint this oil as a point of contact with your divine power. You know what I'm saying? And let and use it, you know what I'm saying, for your praise and glory, for the building up your kingdom, and that souls may be saved, and to heal the saints or all those you tell us to go and anoint and to pray the prayer of freedom. You know what I'm saying? We pray that you will anoint this with your divine power. So when they come, they will anoint you with oil. The oil has already been consecrated for the Lord's use. See? I mean, oh, what is that? What is that? We don't do that. We go to the doctor. We take pills. And people popping all these pills, and they none the better. Two dependent on medicine and the pharmacy, co pharmacy companies. And we have a example of that with the woman who had the issue of blood for 38 years. 38 years. And she was none the better. See? Two dependent on medicine and pharmacy. That is, you know what I'm saying? That, that is not going to heal you. Excuse me. You know? And we have the example of the woman uh, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, it reads in verse uh, 24, it says, And Jesus went with him, and most people followed him, and they thronged him. Okay? Because there was a man. Well, I went really back it up, but um, let's see. Mark chapter 5. Uh, verse 21. We'll say, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, many people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at Jesus' feet. And he begged him greatly, saying, My little daughter is at home lying, um, to, uh, lying down at the point of death. I pray, I'm begging you to, to come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. 
and she shall live. He had faith because he had heard of Jesus' miracles, his healings and stuff like that. He said, my daughter's at home. She's lying down at the point of death. Come and lay hands on her so she will, she will be healed and she'll live. And Jesus went with him. He was on his way with Jairus to his house. You know what I'm saying? To lay hands on his daughter so she could be healed. And much people were following them and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, 12 years, I said 38 years, 12 years, and has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all her money, all she had, and she was nothing the better, but she only grew worse. She grew worse. She was in this state. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. And she was suffering many things, not just because of her ailment, but she said that she was suffering many things of the physicians, the doctors. She was suffering because of their poor lack of care. See? And everybody's so dependent upon these physicians and doctors. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who they, they name is. Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil. You know what I'm saying? We got a, you know what I'm saying, a doctor that never lost a patient. You know what I'm saying? He is the Lord our God that healed us. And that's why our faith is in. You didn't see Jairus go and get no physicians. You know what I'm saying? He went and got Jesus. And this woman, when she heard about it, you know what I'm saying? She had been going to the physicians 12 years, issue of blood, suffered many things of these physicians. You know what I'm saying? That's how they do today. Some of them, they be living, leaving even the scaffolds inside people's bodies. Just incompetent. And they're too busy trying to check their phone. You know what I'm saying? And check up on your own mistress. And how they going to go with their golf buddy calling them. They don't care about you. Leaving, you know what I'm saying? Utensils and stuff like that. Scapples. You know what I'm saying? Uh, gauzes. Cotton balls all in your body. You know what I'm saying? Take it out. Stuff don't supposed to be taken out. They will abuse you. And you're depending on them. See? Don't depend on them. Say your prayer. Call the church elders. You know what I'm saying? And they should come. Pray over you. Anoint you with all. And we're going to get and see what the Lord is going to do. But we're going to end this here. And she has spent all she had. See, that's what people do. They so depend on doctors, nurses, health care providers. God bless them. You know what I'm saying? But they don't have the answer to life and death. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Depending on pharmaceutical companies. They're in business not to make you well, but to make money. This woman has spent all her money. And she was nothing better. So don't get caught up depending on them. Spending all your money. Yeah, thank God you're able to get health care. Get health care. You know what I'm saying? But don't be put your faith in that. That should be a last resort. But the thing is, we're supposed to be depending on the Lord. God is able to do it. So I'm not saying don't sign up for Obamacare. I'm not saying don't have, have that. But we are the people of God. Us be living according to our faith. And being doers of God's word so we can see the manifestation of his healing power. See? She only grew worse. And that's how some people are. They're just getting worse and worse. The doctor prescribed this. Well, we tried that. And then you got an adverse response to that. Let's take you off of that and put you on this and try that for a day or two a week. And then you nothing the better. It ain't even advertised some man that said, oh, this will cure this. But you're going to get 10 other side effects. That's going to potentially kill you. Wake up, people of God. Don't put your faith in my man-made medicine and in doctors and you know pharmacy companies. They've been telling you right up front. Oh, this to take care of that, but it's gonna give you five to ten other side effects that could potentially kill you. Come on. Really? Then if that's not gonna solve the problem, why I'm even being a partaker of it? Depending on that. If you'd have called the elders of the church and if they had came and prayed the prayer of faith, oh, you'll know you at all. The Lord say He will raise you up, He will heal you. See? And when she had heard of Jesus, came, came in the press behind, touched his garment, for she said within herself, If I may just touch his clothes, I know I will be made whole, well, ill. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. The, you know what I'm saying? Being a recipient of the peace of God. You know what I'm saying? Healed in my spirit, healed in my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, and in my body. Made whole, made well, like a pie. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. But when you take a piece of the pie, you're not whole, you're not well. 
Whether it be spiritually or in your mind, your will, your emotions, or your physical. And if you're not, you know what I'm saying, have peace and it being have good health in your spirit, man, and in your uh, soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your physical, man, you are not whole. You are not well. You need the Lord. You need to call on the Lord. You need to call the elders of the church. See? So some of y'all sitting there say, well, I don't, I'm not sick right now. Well, if you don't have the peace of God in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, if you're not totally healed, then you're not whole. You're not whole. Yeah, you need to call them too. See? It ain't always somebody got AIDS and or something, you know, uh, cancer or whatever that might be. Sure. And I say you got to call them for a common cold, you know what I'm saying, like that. But if God tell you to do that, obey the word, obey the Holy Spirit. See? Do what God said do. If he leads you to do that, do what God said to do. Because he might be trying to test those people and show you the people who you are supposed to be your under shepherds. And if they're not, you know, say fulfilling their responsibility or whatever it might be, God may expose them and let you know. See, I'm trying to show you. I'm telling you to try to move on from these people. They don't care. All they want is your money. They're not here to serve you. I got somebody that I'm going to put you under that's not going to do you harm. I give you passes after my own heart. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to do you any harm. Yeah, they're going to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering doctrine, but it's all for your good. Okay? That you may be partakers of God's holiness. Okay? You can count it all joy. They are not going to intentionally abuse you or neglect you. Okay? For she said, I may t if I may touch the his clothes, I shall be made whole. Well, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. Power turned about in the press, in the crowd, and said, who touched me? We got to touch the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And we want to be healed. We got to reach out to him in faith. You know what I'm saying? We got to, you know what I'm saying, make the call, call on the Lord. It, who said I was that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be made well. Huh? That's what we got to do. We got to touch the Lord. We don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was all points taken like we are, like we are, yet without sin. So he says, come boldly, confidently, courageously unto the throne of God's grace that we may receive his mercy, his grace, and his help in our time of need. When we need God or what we need, we need to go to him and pray the prayer of faith. And part of that is calling the elders and they should come and pray over you the prayer of faith, anoint you. And the Lord will do his part. We'll co labor together with God. See, he said, who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. And a woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done to her and in her, came and fell down before him and told all the truth. She bore witness. She testified and said, it's me. I'm the one who was recipient of your healing power. I'm the one that said, if I could just touch the hem of your garden, I know I'd be made whole. Then I put my faith into action and I reached out and touched you and your power healed me. She bore witness before all. And people, God healed people, delivered them, saved them, and they only want to give a testimony to tell what God is doing in and through their life. Shame on you. Now, then when you're sick again or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? You, you, you want to be blessed and promoted, God ain't going to do it. Why? Because he know that you're not going to give him the praise and glory. You're not going to bear witness and testify so he can get his praise and glory. So the body of believers or those who are in the attendance will, will be encouraged and strengthened and built up. And the sinner man will see this and want to be put faith in the Lord as well and be healed and be saved. It ain't just about you. God doing it, you know what I'm saying, blessing you and healing you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. You can tell them, come see a man who can heal you. So selfish and self-centered. Mm, help me keep my cool, Lord. People don't even want to gather and testify. Why? Because they don't have godly examples. They don't have true, real, true servants. But y'all love to have it so. God, you know what I'm saying, he does it for, he works all things together for the good of those that love him to those that are called according to his purpose. And his whole purpose is to bring himself praise and glory. And if that's not your motive, you need, whatever. You know what I'm saying, if you don't, you asking God for something, you're not going to give a testimony to give him praise and glory. God ain't just doing it for you. He can say, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And you walk around, you know what I'm saying, with the blessing of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You ought to be giving a testimony. 
You know what I'm saying? To all God give you opportunity to, especially unto those of the household of faith. Pastor Bishop, whoever, I have a testimony. I need to tell this to encourage the saints and most of all to give God praise and glory and do my witness and testimony and win, win souls into the kingdom. Well, well, I was going to preach today and I was going to teach today. We can set up a time and, you know, when your little care meeting and you can tell it to just them and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's not in the program. See, God is not in the program. Giving God his praise and glory is not in the program. See, because they're too busy trying to exalt themselves and promote their own ministry and using the gifts for self-promotion. But they don't want to give a saint or disciple an opportunity to give a testimony to bear witness what God is doing. It. He's doing it for a purpose, for his praise and glory and to encourage the body of believers to build them up in their most holy faith, to not quit, not throw in a towel that God, God is faithful. He did it for me and he would do it for you. And to witness to the law so they would want to have that same kind of relationship with our Heavenly Father be used by him as well. A recurring cycle of giving God praise and glory. If you're not operating like that, you need to run. You need to pray and go. Okay? And he said unto her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. See? Not some medicine. Huh? Go in peace. See? Go, you, you, you got the peace of God now. You whole now, nothing's lacking. You're not lacking anything. And be whole of your plague. See? See? My God. So we're going to uh, wrap it up here. And I'm way over. You know, I endeavor, you know, to just stay on the hour. And of course, I uh, see it's going, you know, I have to stop with it, knocking off. You know, I have to miss, Matt, just do it within an hour, 40, 45 minutes, and then stop it and rebroadcast again because I don't want nobody sitting through no two hour scopes and everything like that. The people can't even sit. They've got short attention spans. Paul preached all night to God, fell out the window, and broke his neck, and died. He went down there and prayed over him, and he got raised him up. And then he continued on to daybreak. You know what I'm saying? But people can't even sit still for a, for a little bit over an hour, two hours. they too busy trying to go see, you know, What's on TV or some sports or go after their idols, but they ain't got time for God. But yet when they need God, they want to call on the Lord. You're not even a doer of the word. You're not even giving attention to the Lord. This woman, she pressed in. She sought the Lord. Set it before his feet. They want an instantaneous something. God can do it, but he's going to tell you, you have responsibility. And those who you associate with the, in the fellowship, they have responsibility. Y'all do what y'all supposed to be doing. I'm faithful. God is faithful. Okay? He is faithful. Don't worry about him. He will do his, what his words say. And you have a, ought to have an expectation of faith. Go in faith. Call in faith. Pray in faith. And God is faithful to do what he said he will do. Okay? And we're going to get to that, Lord willing. The next time we're going to pick it up in verse 15. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for you, for everybody, you know, saying that God that's being in attendance here, that's watching this uh, scope here. And that's going to watch the rebroadcast, you know what I'm saying, of this scope. You know what I'm saying? We thank God for you. We're praying for you, your family, and your bloodline. You know what I'm saying? And that uh, God's will may be done in your life and theirs as well. And that you all will be healed, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, equipped with all the gifts of the Spirit to be doers of God's word, to bring him total praise and glory, to build up the body of Christ of itself in love, to be partakers of those who equip the saints to, uh, to do the work of the ministry, His the Lord's ministry. You know what I'm saying? And to be partakers of those who make disciples that the same thing that we have heard among many witnesses being taught and trained that we can equip and give to other, teach other faithful men and women so that they can do the same and go on and be anointed, lay hands on a day and sent forth and spread the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And so that we all could be empowered by the Holy Spirit and effective through our, you know, saying sharing of the gospel and witnessing and harvesting millions and billions of souls into God's kingdom for his praise and glory. It's a cycle of giving God praise and glory. All things do unto him because we serve him and not man. Our reward comes to him. You know, saying all for God's praise and glory. That's it. That's what this is about. You know, and if you're not living by, by that motive, you're not even in the will of God. You know, what I'm saying you got to get your heart right, your motive right. If you haven't got your motive right, then you're not even in the will of God. Get your heart right. Get your motive right. Okay? We're not rebuking you in that regard. We're encouraging and exhorting you. You know what I'm saying? Call, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. You know what I'm saying? That's what the word said in Isaiah 55. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he would abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, neither your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but it waters the earth and it makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me without fruit, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. God will do exactly what his word says to do. But we have to be faithful and obedient and not just be hearers of the word and deceiving ourselves, but be doers of the word. And God said he will bless us in our deed. You know what I'm saying? Detailed instructions. When God gives us instructions, we need to do it just like he said to do it. And we're, we're being faithful and obedient to do what he said. We can stand still and see and expect the salvation of the Lord and his word being fulfilled in our life. He's not a man that he shall not know the son of man that she shall repent. If he said it, he will do it. He will bring it to pass. And that's the confidence that we have in him. You know what I'm saying? That's the confidence that we have in him. That's the confidence that we have in him, that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. It's already in us, you know? We got to put our faith into action. We have to be doers of the word. And God's promise is that we will be blessed in our doing of the word, his word, in our deed. Here it is, our Heavenly Father, glorified that you bear much fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Amen. So we pray that this has fallen on good ground and that you would nurture it, you know what I'm saying, water it, you know what I'm saying, like that. Meditate on it, pray about it, you know what I'm saying, and ask the Lord to empower you to be a doer of the word, you know what I'm saying, for his praise and glory, for the education of the body of Christ and that souls may be saved, and he'll give you an opportunity to share your testimony for his praise and glory. Amen. Thank God for you, for all that was here, sharing hearts, uh, your comments. Like I said, I apologize. At this time, I'm trying to be focused, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, I may turn off the chat because I don't, don't want to be distracted. It had nothing to do with you guys, you know I'm saying because just like you know you're in a service and the, the man whoever ministering and teaching you know what I'm saying it's not a and a it's not a bible study in that regard you're going to learn and we can do that you know at another time you know what I'm saying of course we have our morning uh intercessory prayer scopes that's the time we, we fellowship encourage one another but we mostly want to pray and encourage one another to share testimonies and our afternoon scopes and our saturdays at uh, afternoon uh testimony scopes Amen. So you can go to uh, catch.me slash Tracy Smith LNT and you get caught up with all our scopes there. Amen. Praise God. Um, and you can look us up or look me up on Facebook, Tracy Smith, uh, Minister Tracy Smith, Minister Cool Tracy, Brother Cool Tracy, Swords of the Word. Look up my ministry group on Facebook, Swords of the Word. Look up my blog, Swords of the Word dot blogspot dot com and Sower of the Word dot blogspot dot com. On Twitter, Tracy Smith LMT or Swords of the Word. On Instagram, Minister Tracy Smith or Swords of the Word. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for your attendance, for your hearts. If anybody shared inviting people, how the Lord led you. You know what I'm saying? We pray that you've been blessed and to be a blessing. Lord have mercy. Sticky stuff, tearing up my Bible. Ooh, Lord. Anyway. And so we never want to leave you without uh, a, a pronouncing a blessing on you. And we will do that from uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse. Uh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. 20 and 21. I'm going to read that. And the New American Standard. Uh, no. Mm, let me let me go ahead and read another verse. I'm reading the New King James Version. Right here. Right here. Uh, here we go. 13 and 20. Amen. Open up your hearts to receive the blessing. Amen. Amen. I got to try to get this Bible planted down so I can lift up my hands. Without wrath and doubt. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Now, may the God of peace who brought up. Oh, before I leave, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Oh, if you've been watching this broadcast, if God sent you here to this broadcast and you're seeking to have a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, who died on the cross uh, for the sins of the whole world, your sins, past, present, and future, you know what I'm saying? And to put your faith in the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. If God sent you here, we want to minister the gospel to you, the love and grace and mercy of God, you know what I'm saying? You know, if the Holy Spirit is in convicting your heart that you are indeed a sinner, you heard the gospel, the gospel of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38 begins to read, says, repent, all, ye, all of you repent 
therefore, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift, the promise of the Holy Spirit. For the promises unto you and to your children and to as many as our Lord our God shall call. Amen. Praise God. And so, you know what I'm saying, turn and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying, like that, and your first act of obedience as, you know what I'm saying, your faith and obedience to start you off in faith and obedience, put your faith in the Lord, repent of your sins, and then, you know, we pray that God will lead you, and you pray that God will lead you to a faithful uh, body of believers that can truly, you know what I'm saying, uh, serve you as a faithful under shepherds who are doers of the word. Those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, who can truly disciple you and equip you to do the work of the ministry so you can bring God praise and glory. You can be partakers of those who equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of believers of itself in love, to be a partaker of those who are making disciples and to be a those a part of those who are going forth, uh, uh, sharing the gospel as well and your testimony for God's praise and glory and harvesting more souls into the kingdom of God for God's praise and glory. Amen. Praise God. So that's our prayer for you. Put your faith in the Lord and start on a path of faith and obedience by being baptized, planted in the likeness of his death, burial, resurrection, raised to new life. And God's promises that he's, he will, you know, give you his Holy Spirit. And there have been times that he will give you his Holy Spirit before you be baptized. But you, you still, you first have to turn from your sins, repent in godly sorrow and put your faith in the finished work of Christ. Believe the gospel. You know what I'm saying? And you will be saved. Who shall also call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for you. And if the Lord leads you back here to, to receive your discipleship, you know what I'm saying? Or to come back here or to, be, to help in your discipleship, you know what I'm saying? Obey God. Come back here and be submitted unto uh, this uh, ministry uh, as we're here to serve you uh, as unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Y'all continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Lord willing, I will be back uh, tomorrow morning i believe i'm getting my time my voice time to rest up so i'm saying 9 a.m eastern standard time for our morning intercessory prayer scope and uh hopefully we have a good participation in that you know we can do it for one hour but if people are not here they not want to pray you know what i'm saying then we'll, we'll cut it back to 30 minutes and then also uh lord willing we'll be back in the afternoon for our afternoon intercessory prayer scope, you know what I'm saying, to, we're here to pray and to see with you, for you, your family, your loved ones, your associates, business associates, Christian friends, you know, those friends in the world that you're not longer friends with, but you know that they need the Lord, they're not saved, your uh, business associates, uh, partners, your neighbors, your, your enemies, we're here to intercede, and so we pray that you come with an intercessory heart, you know what I'm saying, to pray, you know what I'm saying, to uh, be a participant, that I may lift up somebody's prayer request and somebody else may put a prayer request on the screen or they do click on their profile and encourage them and let them know that you're praying for them as well. Give hearts this encouragement to the broadcaster. If you can, at least give 500 hearts per broadcast. When you first come, you know, you can say your greetings. So we try to do our pleasantries in the beginning, fellowship a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I tend to, you know, when I go to somebody's profile and I know I'm there, I'm going to receive something, I'll go ahead and get out the way. I'll share you know what I'm saying? Invite followers and I'll go ahead and give 500 hearts. And even throughout the broadcast, I'll give more. I've given up over 3,000 hearts, you know, over the broadcast. So because I'm being edified, you know, and I want them people to get the full benefit, you know, because uh, Periscope, they brings up, you know, it becomes trendy. And this is not to promote me or this ministry. It's so that more people can be aware of this ministry and come here to see what the Lord is doing here and that we can minister the gospel to them and harvest souls into the kingdom, plant seeds of the gospel, water the seeds that's already been planted. And God said he would bring the increase. He would add unto his ecclesia, his body, believe his church daily, such as should be saved. Amen. Praise God for his praise and glory. That's all we're here for. We, we're not here to solicit you for anything, to sell anything, you know, like that. We are here to serve. Amen. Praise God. So continue to pray for our strength in the Lord, and we'll continue to pray for you, your family, and your bloodline, that God will save them, sanctify them, fill them with his Holy Spirit, uh, gift them with his whole, uh, His gift of the spirits, uh, supply all their needs according to, their riches, to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, more that he will bless them to be a blessing to many. Uh, you know what I'm saying, for his praise and glory, for the building up of the, uh, the body of Christ of himself in love, to be partakers of those who equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to make disciples and be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to be effective witness, uh, sharing the gospel and our testimony to win millions of souls into his kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so I'm getting ready to do the benediction. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, uh, Lord, when I be here in the afternoon as well, do the afternoon school at three and hopefully we can, uh, you know, do it for an hour, you know, being participants. Amen. God bless you. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Y'all continue to have a super blessed evening in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God. Pray for my strength of the Lord. I love you all. God bless you.